Greetings and salutations, and welcome to episode number 164 here on Ref the District. We are a proud member of the Believe Network. Thanks to everybody who has who have already been tuning in, who have already been checking out and having their say. It's going to be a hot one tonight. That's a promise, and we are going to get to everybody's comments as we go along. I am, of course, a stoner. That over there to your right, to my left, is Trev. Trev, what's up? How you doing, Stoner man? It's been a long time. It feels. I like. know it's been a minute, right? Yep. Yeah. We're just gonna have uh, Trev and I here tonight. Uh, Nathan is taking the week off or the night off because he hasn't th- been taking the week off because he has been pounding out some fantastic videos uh, all about the new signings, and that's what we're going to be talking about this entire game here on episode 164. As I said, we are a proud member of the Believe Network, and if you are here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And, of course, the notification button. But let's do something tonight, Trev. Let's try to get to 200 likes during the live show tonight. That's the goal. Okay. Somebody's going to have to keep track of that for us. Maybe Gus will keep track if we're working our way towards uh, 200 likes for this evening. And, uh, man, we've already got a ton of people here who are checking in to see what's happening. John Iafrade is here, locked on. Of course, Mike is here. Brent's here. Um, geez, everybody. Uh, J. Mike Rosner's here. Tommy T, of course. Uh, Yam's going to be in here for a little bit. Of course, I said Gus is here. Uh, Roger's here. Oh, wow. uh, all kinds of people who are already here. TJ's here. JG. Uh, appreciate, again, everybody. Silver Fox in. Ray's in. Everybody, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you are not already a subscriber because it's going to be a hot one. Getting all the stuff out of the way so that we can talk all about ball And if you are a guy who likes ball and likes to check out, maybe throw a few shekels onto a game, Bet Online is a sponsor of our show as well. They continue to be your number one source for all your wagering needs to include NBA and college hoops throughout the entire year. Up to the minute, odds, stats, trends. Follow all your favorite teams' path to the playoffs with in game live betting contests and all the best player props head to bet online today to become part of the team and remember to use the promo code believe b-l-e-a-v for your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online the game starts here and please remember to always bet responsibly look trev as i said it's gonna be a hot show and also if you're listening on audio make sure you leave a rating and review as well and subscribe to uh ref the district of course Look, going forward in the cool yeah. down, which is later, we're going to look ahead after we talk about everything that we're going to talk about. What's next for Washington? Because the draft is right around the corner, Trev. It's about five weeks away. So yep. the draft is coming. So we're going to talk about that in the cool down. How do all these players that have been signed, how do they fit into what Washington's going to do in the draft? That's going to be a key. So we'll do that later on in the cool down. In the game, we're going to talk about all these signings, and we've got a lot of them. 14, I believe, is yeah. the number right now. It might be 15. It's hard to keep up. Trev is going to be the uh, Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport uh, guy throughout the show to see if there's any new signings as uh, as we go along. So Trev will keep track of that. Uh, so that's going to go on during the game. But here in the warm-up, Trev, we want to talk about the guys who are leaving first. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the guys who are leaving first. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on that because, look, we got to get to the ones who are coming here and how much that impacts uh, this team. So we'll get to all your comments and everything. And if you want to talk about some of the guys who are leaving already, the first one, Trev, and remember, there were 24, Trev, 24 free agents on this team Mm -hmm. at the end of this season. Yep. To the best of my knowledge, Trev, two have signed on with other teams during legal legal tampering and during the now that the new league year has started as of 4 p.m. Eastern today, two have gone out and signed with other teams. What does that tell you about the roster that Washington has had over the last few years? (laughs) See my Adam Peters pause right there I did from his press conference. I love it. He's doing Adam Peters pause. 
that's what it was. It's mm. poopy, atrocious, yeah, uh, below market, uh, third stringers and on type roster. So, mm-hmm. and, and it's it's crazy because uh, we looked at it when we're watching these guys. We saw talent, and maybe mm. it's just a case that the talent wasn't being used properly. But first of all, Antonio Gibson, we kind of knew he was going to he was going to go somewhere and he was a third round yeah. pick in 2020 just 4 years ago. He went and signed with the Patriots for a, a fair amount of money, like 5 million dollars mm-hmm. guaranteed. Are you going to miss Antonio Gibson regardless of what we're going to talk about in the game with who is replacing him? Are you going to miss Antonio Gibson here, Trev? No. Uh, if you would ask me if this was happening after his 2020 year, whoa, what happened? Oh, sorry. My internet shifted up. My desktop was weird. Okay. I'm back. If you would ask me this question, if this was happening after his 2020 year, we had that thousand yard season, I think. Yes. My answer would have been yes. Yeah. But ever since then, he's been plagued by injuries with a turf toe and he just can't hold on to the ball. He kind yeah. of became more of a detriment to us than an asset to us as he got further along in his career with us. So, um, he was a great guy, great talent. We drafted him. He was a like a gadget guy at Memphis. We try to make mm-hmm. him running back one here. Then when Eric Bieniemy comes, we try to make him like his gadget style play again. We kind of really didn't figure out what position he was and what his role was for us. Yeah, that's a shame because the boy is talented. The guy is talented. Um, we've seen it here many times in Washington, but I'm not gonna miss him. He wasn't someone I was like, oh man our production is going to go way down or da, 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 yeah. Da, so. Yeah. But I think it's fair yeah. to say that he does have the talent. We saw some oh, explosive yeah. plays from him. For sure. Uh, I think about yeah. back when that bills, that screenplay against the bills, when he took yes. all the way, to the house, all the way right? across yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Thanksgiving you know, game when he gutted the Cowboys. Oh, wait, three my touchdowns that day, I think. In Jerry's world. Yes. In Jerry's yeah. world. Beautiful. Yeah. Like it was, but yeah, but oh, well. unfortunately, it, it kind of didn't work out here. I think probably if he had better coaching here, he probably could have played mm-hmm. uh, a bigger role, could have had more success yeah. here. But look, it it I was agree. somebody they had to let go. And, and of course, yeah. we'll talk about his replacement later. Um, but the second guy that mm-hmm. they let go or that has yeah. signed with another team is Sadiq mm-hmm. Charles. Yeah. And Sadiq Charles signed with the Titans. I don't think he got a whole heck of a lot of money with the yeah. Titans. Uh, I mean, how could he? He was a backup here for his three years, four I years. Three, uh, years, three or four. I think he was a he was the same draft. He was a okay. 2020 draft pick, fourth round guy out of LSU, and and he, you know, there's a lot of high hopes for him again, also because he was originally considered a first round pick. And we got mm-hmm. him so late, Washington did. But, man, he was always hurt. So are you going to yeah. miss – I mean, it's probably an easy question. No. But are you going to miss Sadiq Charles? No. <laughs> Not even a pause with that one. You didn't give the uh, no. Adam Peters pause on that. No. No, you just can't stay healthy. Um, yeah. When he was healthy, he was serviceable for us. He was okay. He didn't stand out. He wasn't a lot of, on a lot of PFF charts or stats or yeah. anything like that. But – um, we're very close to this team, so that may play an effect but with him. No. Nah. Yeah, I, and I think that's <laughs> fair also on Sadiq Charles. Uh, the one thing I would always point out when he was healthy is he couldn't beat out guys like Andrew Norwell. He couldn't right. beat out – I think he did training beat camp. out Chris Paul in training camp, but yeah. there wasn't a noticeable difference between the <laughs> two guys. And so he was no. just – he was just kind of a guy, and it, and it's and it's unfortunate. It's, again, we get that hype in when the draft comes along, and then it just seems like uh, nothing ever happens. And so Sadiq Charles <laughs> is gone. He's signed with another team. Antonio Gibson is signed up with another team. Of the guys who are still remaining as restricted or unrestricted free agents, I guess the guys who were restricted were not offered. Uh, you know, they weren't tendered. No, uh, whatever the term whatever is. is. So they're yeah. unrestricted as well. Of those guys, and we can name a few of them, the guys like Cam Curl, Kendall Fuller, Curtis mm-hmm. Samuel, guys like that mm-hmm. have not signed with another team. 
Are you surprised at any of them not signing with another team? No, I'm not actually. Um, we were four and thirteen last year. So all of our guys, even our better players, are not going to stand out that much more than the ones who've gotten signed already. Yeah. Um, I think they will land on the team probably later on in free agency. Once the next wave happens, they might go in that way, like after this week. Um, but no, I'm not surprised because, like I said, they were 4-13 and 13 last year, no matter if you're offensive or defense, mm-hmm. you're a goofy team. So. And they're not – the players that and they're they were good, better players for this team, but they're yeah. not considered, I don't think, elite top players that other teams are looking for at this moment right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they were they were top for us because they were the best we had. But once they get out there with everybody else, it's like, oh wait, we can get them at like that minimum three right. weeks from now or whatever, whatever. So that's what I feel. And I think uh uh, fanboy, I guess that's how you say that. Uh, Curl is expecting uh, when the market isn't there. He's expecting a lot uh, mm-hmm. when the market isn't there. Do you think that's one of the reasons why he's not signing here is because he's maybe overpriced himself? For sure. He's been trying yeah. to get this extension talks going since the end of last season, and they haven't reached any type of close agreement to this point. So, And, and obviously we made a move we're going to talk about we're gonna make a move. We made a move for agency that could potentially replace him. Yeah, for the money that he's probably poo pooing at. So we'll get to that soon, of course. But yeah, yeah, I think he's asking too much for what he's what his production is and what he thinks he is. Did you see the rumor that that mm-hmm. got a lot of play that Cam Crow was going to Seattle? <laughs> yeah, some uh, Seattle Mariners, something, some M Mariners and Mayhawk or whatever. Yeah, Twitter. I double took at it when I when I saw it first, but then I was like, nah, it's not real. No blue check. No one else yeah. reported it. If it didn't come from Adam Schefter, Jordan Schultz, or Ian Rappaport, yeah, don't believe I, it. I ain't buying it. Nope. You got to get that confirmation from those guys. And, <laughs> and and we know that this this sort of this whole week we started Monday and Tuesday with the whole legal tampering period, and then today was basically the first. Uh, not full day, but first day of free agency when the new league year started at 4 p.m. Eastern, that's when guys can officially start signing. Were you surprised about, I asked you about the guys who are not leaving. Are you surprised about how active Washington was in signing guys just overall? Were you expecting this big of a, a chain. No, I was expecting maybe half of this, to be mm-hmm. honest. Because we, we're at what, 14, 7 or 8. That's what I thought we'd be doing the first week. Yeah. Um, I knew we'd be doing way more than we did the past few seasons, but not what we're doing right now. And I'm loving yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's, it's fun. It's, it's This so is kind of, you know, the winning the off season that Washington mm-hmm. used to do. But it seems they're doing it a little bit different this way. They're not going out and getting those big name, big money guys. Nope. They're not spending a lot of money in the kind of guys they're that they're getting. And we're going to talk about all of those guys. Again, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and notifications. We're trying to get to 200 likes on this particular show before we sign off. So help us get there. Um, Trev, we talked about before we came on, we talked mm-hmm. about uh, kind of the hype of this, what's going on now. New owners, new uh, coaching staff, new front office, obviously all these new players. And we talked about how hype training camp is going to be. What do you expect to see in training camp this year? And we haven't even gotten to the draft yet. I know. Chippiness, excitement, mm-hmm. focus, mm-hmm. hard work, a ton of sweat. <laughs> yeah. Um, discipline. Due, due diligence. Like, I think this is going to be like one of the most professional training camps we've been a part of. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying the previous one, previous ones weren't, but they were kind of lackadaisical. Um, they weren't too, for the ones that fans could go to, they weren't too intense. They weren't too, you know, telling of what the team really is. It was just a bunch of guys running drills pretty much. And you might have a couple of random one-on-ones that got the crowd make some noise, but mm. You didn't really get to see anybody's work ethic on this team outside of Terry McLaurin and maybe John Alvin, Deron Payne. But now with the, with the new blood in town, 
And I think that's going to start with the front office and the coaching staff, not just the players that we've brought on. Oh, yeah. But the coaching staff and the culture that they've brought already to this squad without even touching the field. Yeah. It's going to be. It's going to be awesome. It's going to look like an all-star camp too. Uh, we'll get crazy. to that, but like it's going to be it's going to be crazy. All right. Well, listen, let's not bury the lead anymore, okay? Because <laughs> yeah, look, this is a hot show. Well, we've already yeah. got 350 people in here. I was, I was trying to think back, Trev, about some of the shows, some ref the district shows we've had in the past that have kind mm-hmm. of had just some massive hype to yeah. it, and I was thinking about um two 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 twenty two. Remember, we were live for the announcement of the commander's name, and that was just pure excitement and fire yeah. and all that. Uh, yeah. I was thinking about the draft show from two years ago at yeah. FedEx. Man, we had Jonathan Allen, Logan Thomas, Kendall Fuller, who I I asked the wrong guy uh, to come oh, over. Yeah, was Kendall was- Fuller's, <laughs> uh, you know, handler or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, Kendall, can you come on? Oh, that was embarrassing. Uh, we had Fred Smoot. We had London Fletcher. We had so mm-hmm. many on that show that day, and and that I think this ranks up there, Trev. This oh, for sure. this live show this ranks up there with some of the best and most hyped ref the district shows we've had, just because of what New Adam era. Peters is doing. No, it's what Josh Harris has done. Josh, that's Harris. what it is. It starts with Josh Harris getting yeah. getting taking his spot. I'm not saying his name because I don't. I have enough to put in the dollar right, jar right. right now, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it starts with him and then trickles down to Adam Peters and then the coaching staff. And then, so yeah, it's new, it's literally yeah. a new era. I cannot, yeah. oh, I'm so hyped. I'm I so know, hyped. right? And, and, and you know what was funny is because you know, I get all hyped about all of this stuff and this whole off season and everything. And uh, it's good that I have my wife is always on the side saying, You do this every year, you yes. get all hyped. And every <laughs> yeah. year, I always say, but it's going to be different this year. And then it never is. But Trev, I'm telling you, it's going to be different this year. It's going to be different this year. It's going to be different. So let's not bury the lead anymore. Let's get to all of the new signings here uh, in Washington. Uh, We're going to talk about every single one of them, Trev. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and what we expect and what it means. And we want to hear from everybody on what everybody uh, is excited about with these guys or some cautionary tales about them. Cause look there there's 16 or 17 guys, whatever the number is. And I'll count them up here. Not everyone's going to be a home run. Not everyone is going to work out. There are going to be some duds. That's just the nature of the business. So we're going to have to kind of, um, uh, keep an eye on that. So, Let's uh, temper our expectations just a little bit, but hey, let's get hyped and let's talk about all of that here upcoming in the game. All right, we are back here on Ref the District episode number 164 here. This is the game. Oh, I was supposed to switch that, Trev, and I didn't. So now here I am here on the game. The game is presented by Don't Sleep Energy Drink. Go to don'tsleepenergy.com. Use the code DISTRICT. Get 12% off anything on their site. They have fantastic. Uh, I got the, I got the, what you call it? I got the energy shots right here. There you go. Don't Sleep yep. Energy energy shots or the drinks. They have sugar-free. They've got it all. They are a local DMV company, and they're a big supporter of this show, and we're happy to talk about them and have them as a supporter. So go to don'tsleepenergy.com and use the code district to get 10% off. And now let's talk about all these guys, Trev. First of all, I got to ask you, are there, is there anybody new that has been signed in the last 15 minutes since we started the show? Not for us, no, but, but, uh, NFC East plot twist, Eric Kendricks, who had agreed to 49ers this past week and has now changed his mind to going to Dallas. Whoa. Well, I mean, I mean, doubt that's their first signing. Yeah. Right. That their first yeah. signing from someone from another team. I guess before that it was only the long snapper, their own long snapper they re-signed. Yeah. Or, yeah right. Yeah. So yeah. that's their first one. They were the only team that didn't sign anybody from outside. So that's uh good for them. They're on the board. <laughs> they're Anyways. they are finally joining uh the party that everybody's been a part of the last uh <laughs> few weeks. Uh again, we're trying to get 
200 likes on the show. There's 425 people in here now. So make sure you all hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, become a subscriber because we put out content all the time and we appreciate everybody who is here. So let's get to these signings. Okay. Let's do it. And like I said, we're going to go through each one. Let me count them. One, two, three. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then two of our own 14, 15. So 15 okay. signings for Washington so far, 13 of them from outside. Um, most of them are starters. I guess you could kind of take away the long snapper and the kicker and the backup quarterback, and the rest of them are starters. You've basically, 50% of your starters have already changed, and the math is about 25% of your entire team has already been turned over. And we yeah. haven't even gotten to the draft. No, where Trev Washington. What a second wave of free agency. Yeah, Dre, Washington has yeah. nine picks, six of them coming in the first 101 selections in the upcoming draft. So it is going to be fire when it comes to draft time. All right, first one. I'm just going to give a little bit of information, Trev, and then I want you to comment on what you expect from this player. The first one, of course, was Zach Ertz. He was the first one. It might even been Sunday. Maybe it was Monday, but he was um, uh, he was not really a free agent because he was uh, out on the market. I guess he was a free agent. Uh, yeah, was. But tight end Zach Ertz is going to be 34 years old at some point during the season this year. He signed a one-year, $5 million contract. Okay, We all know Zach Ertz from most of his time there in Philadelphia. But the last two years he played in Arizona – and he only played in 17 out of 34 games because of injury. Mm -hmm. So he played half the games. Uh, they let him go towards the end of the season. Detroit picked him up, put him on the practice squad, mm -hmm. but never activated him during the playoff run. Um, but otherwise, out of those last 34 games in Arizona, he's been a pretty healthy for a tight end. What do you expect from Zach Ertz? And what is everybody who is here in the chat, what do you all expect from Zach Ertz? Well, we first – when the news first broke out, I was like, "Ah, oh, okay, you know, lock, we have room, a locker room leader, tight end two or three, help these younger guys adapt." I saw his press conference and read some notes on that. Yeah, he's got a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, he says he's right? Super Bowl. He said he won a Super Bowl and he still feels like he has more to prove after that. He said if he didn't feel like he had anything to prove, he would just retire, and he didn't. Mm. And he got back with his boy Cliff Kingsbury. So I'm expect I'm expecting some production, some uh, first down, second down production i'm expecting zach ertz from his first year in arizona and to like his maybe last two years in philadelphia that kind of zach ertz yeah just because he thinks he's still got enough left in the tank you know when you sign players of this age you're usually like you know i'm just coming to do you know whatever the coach needs me to do whatever role but he's like i got a chip in my shoulder like i'm ready to go so yeah. I'm, I'm expecting some some bigger things than what i first expected when i first heard the news yeah absolutely and shout out nathan who is in here uh we talked about <laughs> nathan being able to make tonight. He's not no, expecting a whole lot from Ertz. I, I'm really not either, not. Trev. Okay. But, uh, I mean, Ertz, Logan Thomas at this point, same guy. So, But what you are doing, what you are doing, though, Trev, and, and they're going to have to get a tight end, whether it's in the draft or somebody, Cole Turner or Monty Rogers, somebody's going to have to step up, okay, because you don't want Zach Ertz as your starting tight end for 17 games, and you can't rely on him for 17 games. But the best part of it, five million bucks, right? Right, cheap, here, yeah. five million. Let's see what you can do, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, I think that's fair. All right, next one is center Tyler Biad Biadas Biadash Biadash. Yeah. What say it? I think it's Biadash Biadash. I'll I'll take mm -hmm. that. Um, he is going to be twenty seven years old at some point during the Love season. It. Mm -hmm. um, he signed a three-year, $29.3 million contract, Trev, $13.5 million at signing and $20.7 million guaranteed. He's a Wisconsin guy. He's drafted in the fourth round by Dallas in 2020. Last year, he had a total of two penalties, two holding penalties in 16 games. And in 2022, he was a pro bowler. In the last three years, he's played in 49 out of a possible 51 games. What do you expect oh. from <laughs> Viadage? Is that what you said? Yeah, be a dash. I'm expecting yeah. true center play. Um, I'm expecting durability. I'm expecting protection. I think he's only allowed like what four sacks of I think all total last year. Um, he's young, which yeah. means he's still got a lot of the years left on him to play that position. Because that's 
I mean, look at Jason Kelsey. How old is he? Like 30 something. He was 36. Yeah. So, and he was durable and reliable. He played center for a long time. So I'm actually really super comfortable that we have an established center starting for us as yeah. the Washington commander. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm I mean, I mean, it's been, it's been, I guess Chase Ruye could be considered. He was, Oh yeah. I mean, he was a good center, but you know, he wasn't as reliable because of the injuries. So, right. Uh, but good, but good for him. Uh, I like him. I think this is a fantastic signing. Yes. I think yeah. uh, you take away from uh, your division opponent as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan mm-hmm. Quinn obviously knows him. His defense went up against mm-hmm. him every single day in practice. So mm-hmm. he obviously approved of this particular move. So I'm excited sure. about that. And, and thanks to everybody who uh, jumped in and gave us the proper pronunciations. I think it's be a, be a, be a dish. Be a yeah. dish. Okay. All right. We'll, t- we'll be take that. So uh, appreciate everybody. <laughs> jumping in with that but you're right he is younger but this is one of the bigger deals that that washington did give out um, yes was you know he's he's got 20 and a half million guaranteed but this year his number isn't that big in 2024 no. so i think this is a great signing and uh, shout out. oh go ahead it provides much 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 of a what's they're looking for advantage for a rookie quarterback to play with we don't That's have to worry you. about well, Tyler Larson's played a, a little bit. You know, he, he's pretty good. Or, you know, we have somebody slide over from the guard position to play. No, we have a true center that has been has been uh, an NFL vet now, I guess, after three years with the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. So that's huge. It's great. It's yeah, comfortable. I, it's comfortable. I think that that can't be overstated. That you know, uh, uh, a veteran, not and not even really a like an old guy, but a veteran guy who's right. played for who's started for three years and has played for four mm-hmm. years that he's going to bring in that stability for your rookie quarterback. And to kind of um, jump on that uh, shout out here to uh, Mike with the $10 super chat. Nathan does the sound. So I don't have the sound. <laughs> <in front laughs> <of me. laughs> Beautiful. Uh, who starts week one of Washington season. I'm, I'm assuming Mike is talking about quarterbacks. We're yeah. going to talk about that later, but just to, to shout out Mike uh, for the $10 super chat donation. Um, whoever the rookie quarterback is that they drafted to, that's who's starting week one. I can, sure. I can almost, almost guarantee it. Um, and then of course Washington did get rid of uh, in the center position. They did get rid of uh, Tyler Larson, right? And yeah, Chase Rie, of course, Gates. retired, and Nick Gates they cut as well. So obviously they needed center. Um, and then what does that mean for Ricky Stromberg? What do you think? Backup number two. I mean, yeah. I don't think he'll be let go, but he's he's gonna get more. I don't know work than he did last year. I guess because we were yeah. we were changing between Tyler Larson, Nick Gates, and still never Keith Schomburg. So I guess he just moved up in the depth chart. That's about it. Yeah, I think that's your backup center now. Is um, yeah. That's fine. It's Ricky Stromberg. Yeah, that's fine as well. But he was what? He was a third rounder. Yeah. I like to see my Push. third round start, but right. But like I don't think that's an indictment on him. It wasn't his fault that our buffoons <laughs> of a regime decided he was sure. a third round caliber player. You know, maybe he deserved to be picked in the fifth or sixth round, but we just took him to third because of who was in charge. So yeah, absolutely. That's a toss up. All right, next one is uh, defensive end Dorrance Armstrong, again from the Cowboys. He's going to be 27 years old during the season. He signed a three-year, $33 million contract, $15 million million signing bonus, $22.2 million guaranteed. He's got cap hits uh, this year, $4.9 million, uh, then $9.8 million, then $12.4 million over the next three years. Uh, They can get out of that. Um, after two years, he was a fourth round pick by Dallas in 2018 and Trev, he's missed six games in six years. So he's another guy who has stayed healthy, but he's never been a full-time starter, right? right? He's been a fill in kind of guy, The la- but the last two years combined, he had t- 17 tackles for loss, 28 QB hits and 16 sacks over the course of the last two years. Never as a full-time starter. Do you have a problem with, mm-hmm. With Washington giving thirty-three million dollars to a guy who has never been a full-time starter, no, because uh, he came from Dan Quinn, 
last year. And Dan Quinn got is you know got to see him up close and personal for three seasons in a row, four seasons in a row, whatever. And I trust him. So maybe his production in Dallas has de- deserved him to become a starter, a full time starter. Mm. I mean, I'm I'm why not? Because who else will we, will we get to side to start in place of him during free agency right now? There's yeah. really no one else out there. It's, it's like him and less talent level wise. So yeah, I'm fine with giving him the contract he got. He's going to be a starter for us here, which is I'm I'm cool with. He always gave us problems when we played him. I was like, who is this Armstrong guy? Like, he's, <laughs> right? You never really heard Michael Parsons a lot. You heard a lot of Armstrong and Gallimore and 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 uh, Demarcus Lawrence, but so. Yeah, mm. I think it's great. Start yeah, money. Yeah, I think it's cheap starter money. Cheap starter money. It, it is, but you know, I, I'll be I'll be honest on this one. I am a little bit cautious on Armstrong, and uh, Gus kind of puts it right in there for me. Gives you Jason <laughs> Hatcher vibes. Jason um, Hatcher Cowboys or Jason Hatcher for us? Yeah, well, I think that's what he's saying because he was good with the Cowboys and then he comes to Washington <laughs> and doesn't do as much because I don't think he was a full-time starter in Dallas well, either. But look at the stats he got in a full-time starter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, look, they gave him a lot of money, relatively speaking. It's not a right. ton of money for, a, for an edge guy, but right. it's enough money to make you go, hmm, be careful with this. But he's young. He's, I, you're right. He's only, what do we say? He's going to be 26? 27 this year. So I get it. I understand. But that, that's another signing. That's three of them already. Uh, okay. We can't spend too much time on any one guy until we get to those big ones that are coming up here with uh, okay. your backup quarterback, your running back, your linebackers, and, or your yes. linebackers, yeah. especially the most recent one. But let's talk about the kicker, Brandon McManus. He's going to be okay. 33, one year, $3.6 million deal. He spent nine years in Denver and then last year in Jacksonville. He's a career 81.4% field goal kicker. Extra points, 97.2, 70% touchback percentage. Just for comparison, Trev, just to get people riled up about Brandon McManus, Joey yeah. Sly had an 82.3% career field goal percentage. That's better than McManus. Right. Extra points. Sly is 88.5% compared to 97%. That's <laughs> yeah. one point, though, Trev. That's one point. Field okay. Three points. Okay, keep going. All right. Uh, okay, so he had an 83.3% touchback percentage, which that's way better than McManus, who was 70%. And beyond 50, Joey Sly kicked it at 63%, while... Yeah while McManus kicks over 50 yard field goals at a 55%. I'm going to say this and it's going to rile some people up. And I'm just saying Joy Sly was just as good a kicker as Brandon McManus. And I understand letting Sly go because you're here long enough and you're going to kind of wear out your welcome, missing some extra points, missing some critical field goals, but if you just look at the overall record stats, they're the same guy. <laughs> Trev, Trev, do you are you okay with them letting signing Brandon McManus for Joyce Lie? Yes. Okay. Yes. Get, well, give me some give me some reasons. I just gave you Joey all the Sly. percentages that showed That's Sly cool. was basically better. That's that's awesome. Those, I mean, you're right. But when it came down to when the kicks mattered, Joey Sly couldn't deliver, and I'm pretty sure McManus has delivered in those same situations. Yeah, I remember he's been a. Like you said nine years in Denver. I remember him in Denver. But then those offenses in Denver weren't that great. Our offense wasn't that great. So we're we're out here trotting on our field goal kicker Joey Sly, 45, 52, 56, 54 yard field goals all the time. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna suck, but. If our offense can get down the field and give our kicker like a 35 to 40 yard field goal try all the time, more than none, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. about it. But yeah, dude, Joey, you wore out your welcome. I was yeah. happy we got you. I, I think that's fair. You wore out your welcome. You we did. gave you chance after chance after chance. You could have been fired last year. You could have been fired the year before that. We kept you around, kept you around. It was the same old thing. So we yeah. appreciate it. 
and you're a Ron Rivera guy too. We ain't trying to have that this year. <laughs> Get that stench oh out of here. So, um, Tommy T brings up a great, great point. They could still bring a kicker into could. camp, as Brian uh, also says here. Look, his, his dead cap money this year is a million and a half. So if he's not good enough in camp and they bring in some guy off the street who beats him out, they will cut him with the quickness. Yeah, because no a million and a half dead cap is nothing nowadays. <laughs> no. All right, so let's get to defensive end Cleveland Farrell. He's also going to be 27 years old. One year, $3.75 million contract. Not sure yet what his dead cap money is. But in 2019, he was the fourth overall pick by the Raiders. Um, he spent three years with the Raiders, and then they had enough of him, and they cut him, and he went on to play last year in San Francisco. San Francisco, who has a bunch of free agents at defensive end, decided they didn't want him. Right? They got they're going to lose Chase Young. They're going to lose him. They're going to lose Armstead. Right? They're going to mm-hmm. they're going to get decimated. But they still didn't want him. But um, he's had 13 and a half career sacks in five years. But he's only missed eight games in the last in all of his six years. When he was in college at Clemson, he was unbelievable. Yes, he was. I mean, yeah, him that, and Christian Wilkins. Oh my goodness. Yeah, in that one year, the the first time they won us, or the second time maybe they won a championship, I can't remember. It might have been that last year or whatever. But um, uh, he was the defensive MVP in the Mm -hmm. in the championship game. That's how good he was. And when Clemson won a title, so he was amazing. But he hasn't lived up to it. But it's a prove it deal, and he's a depth guy. And he might be just another one of those guys. If he comes in here and doesn't play well, he gone. So I like it. Uh, I'm not expecting crazy numbers, but I'm expecting nice depth, like you said. It it beats KJ Henry or Andre Jones coming off the bench to help out. Um, He was with Daryl Tapp, our defensive line coach in San Francisco last year, so there's some familiarity with there. Yeah. Um, Like you said, prove it deal. Maybe just a place to rejuvenate his career. You know, maybe he could look to get an extension here next year or something like that. We'll see what happens, but yeah. I mean, I'm not disappointed by it. I'm not jumping out of my seat about it. I'm, I'm, I enjoy it. I'm content with it. I'm comfortable with it. It's better than what we've had. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, he's probably nothing better than what we've had, but right. you need him. You need uh, defensive ends because they only had their two draft picks from last year, which was Andre Jones and KJ Henry, who are actually on this roster. That's it. You obviously yes. need depth there. All right, moving on to guard Nick Allegretti. He Ooh. he will be 28 no. this year. Uh no. three year, $16 million contract with 5.9 million signing, 9 million guaranteed. Um, so he's gonna be around for a little. He was a 2019 seventh round pick by Kansas City. He's basically been a backup his entire time there. He's won two Super Bowls, but he was absolutely desperate to get a chance to start. And I think you were saying it as I was saying his name. He's a dog, yes. right? He's he's caught a touchdown pass. He's yep. played two Super Bowls, and he played last year's Super Bowl in place of uh, Tooney, right? Yep. And and played it with a torn UCL the entire game. Yep, yep. Travis Kelsey said on the podcast he was hollering for an elbow brace the entire game, but never to come out. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Dog. So you Dog. have Allegretti at left guard. I, I assume okay. this is how it's going to go. Allegretti at left guard. Uh, of course, you got be a dish at mm-hmm. center, and then you've got Cosme at right guard. Your interior offensive line in the course of three days has been shored up. Yep. And, okay. and that's what we've asked for. We've asked them to fix this line, and it seems like they are fixing this line and not paying a ton of money. If you're going, if you're getting be a dish this year, has uh, I, I missed what his cap number is this year, but I think it's somewhere in the four million dollar range Cosme mm-hmm. is not a, a huge contract because he was a second nope. round uh pick and then you have uh Allegretti who's going to get this year 3.6 million against the cap and so you've done it without spending a ton of money which is uh which I think is fantastic now I would like to hear um why this is not a good signing why Allegretti is not a good signing I think it's a fantastic signing I He's love cool. this guy Mm-hmm. And believe me, as somebody pointed out earlier, I'll jump in and I'll say something if I don't like a signing like with Brandon McManus 
over Joey Sly. To me, they're the same guy. Last year, when they signed, um, it was the dude, the right tackle, Wiley and mm-hmm. Nick Gates. We did a um, a video, and I hated those picks. I you thought did. they were absolutely terrible selections. But Nick Allegretti, I love it. I love this selection, Trev. And I think you do, too. Nathan doesn't do. like it. He thinks Stromberg's going to start at guard over. No, L. he's not. <laughs> if he would, they wouldn't, have, they wouldn't have signed the guy. They wouldn't have given him $9 million guaranteed. He I, played I, behind I mean, Stromberg? Yeah, I don't think the so. The man just won a Super Bowl. Two Super Bowls. I mean, yes, but he did just win this past. Come on, Nathan. Super Bowl. Come on, Nathan. <laughs> that's that's going to be the this the theme here. All right, let's get to the quarterback position and people losing their mind over this one. Uh, quarterback Marcus Mariota, of course, he'll be 31 this year. He signed a simple one-year, $6 million contract. Of course, he was the 2015 number two overall pick behind James Winston. Um, and he was back up last year to Hertz. So he played in Vegas for a couple of years. And of course he started off in Tennessee where eventually they, uh, traded for or signed Tannehill basically to replace mm-hmm. Mariota because he was obviously not good enough. Are you okay with this? First of all, let me ask you if you're okay with Marcus Mariota coming in. I'm okay with Marcus Mariota coming in. I'm probably right. fine with it. Want to know why? That's I, I, I don't know why he chose to come here. Yeah, I did not see this coming until Peter Schrager made a comment about it like a couple hours before it happened, but I never saw this on the free agency radar. Never saw Marcus Mariota being the, the vet quarterback that we brought in. I'm okay with it. Yeah. I'm fine. Okay. Do you think that it signals what type of quarterback Washington is going to draft at number two? Yes, bro. I think it does. I I, mm-hmm. I I really do because of our offensive coordinator and who he is. And he has complete control over the offense, according to Dan Quinn. So I do believe that um, because you've seen it. All Cliff does is work with mobile quarterbacks, quarterbacks that can, they can hurt you with their legs. Say what you want, but Mariota was a dog at Oregon before he came in. At oh, he was unbelievable at Oregon. Unbelievable. unbelievable. So let's go down the, 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 the checklist. Marcus Mariota, he'll work with him now. Pat Mahomes he's worked with. Johnny Manziel he's worked with. Kyler Murray he's worked with. Caleb Williams he's worked with. What do they all have in common? Wheels. Mobility. Mm. Mm. Um, able to adapt when the play breaks down and, and make a play out of, as a result out of that. So, like, I'm cool with it. And I do think it does because you want your offense to not lose a step is what I think this is signifying, too. If yeah. you do get somebody at number two with the mobile aspect, he happens to go down. We got somebody who can come in and run the offense just as capable as the as a rookie for the two as well. Yeah. Um, so that's why I, I do believe I saw JP Finley tweet that, saw it and thought about it, and I, I kind of on board with that. So yeah. Hmm. Uh what about this? As Brian says, uh word is he was our second choice and that Darnold was the first choice, but Darnold was a little too expensive or just didn't want to necessarily play here. Darnold wants to start. He still mm-hmm. thinks he is a starting quarterback in the NFL. And I think yeah. he's in Minnesota with that notion that he has a chance to compete in camp with a rookie that gets taken by Minnesota. If that's what they choose to do. Um, yeah. I don't know why he was our first choice mm. to begin with. That's that's a little suspect too, but yeah, Kevin Mariota I think is. is well, I mean, one. maybe the connection with um, Peters in San Francisco, and that yeah, he true. liked what he did uh, as a backup in San Francisco. True. You remember Mariota almost beat us a couple of years ago when for that fourth quarter interception that Fuller finger tipped. Yeah, he almost beat us. So like right. Mariota's no slouch. I mean, he's, he might not be a starting quarterback anymore, but he's he's someone that can come in and help you do what you got got to do. I don't think we miss a step either with Jacoby Brissett. I think he's a Jacoby Brissett as well. All right. Um, I'm going to – Gus says that May, Caleb, and J- Jaden are all mobile. No. I don't agree with okay. that either. I, I, okay. Maybe mobile is not the word because May is mobile. Creative, electric, elusive, athletic. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 
it's a different type of style. Like Sam Howe and Baker Mayfield comparisons. Yeah, they're mobile and stuff, but they're like top heavy. They're not juking guys, hurting right. guys. They're not Lamar Jackson agility, Michael Vick right. agility. I think that's what I'm trying to say is the agility level is different. Drake May is mobile. He can scramble and make things happen, but he can't. He ain't going to do a Jaden Daniels against Florida type run. You're not going to see that. You're not going right. to see him do what Caleb Williams does, think this way, contort his body some way and still throw a dime in the corner. That's what I mean by mobility. So I'm going to change that out to agility instead. Yeah, I, and I think that's fair. And 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 I think Gus is right in that, yeah, they are all mobile. But there's a different level, as you're saying. Yeah. There's a different level to their – open field ability right and i think you did a great comparison sam howell is a mobile quarterback yes. but he's not josh allen no he's not lamar jackson no jayden daniels he's not pat Mahomes. Mahomes guys yes right? exactly yes. caleb and, and mariota yep are are more like a sam howell they can mm-hmm. they can run they can Thank make you. plays out of the pocket but they're not runners the runner that Jaden Daniels is. So that's kind of oh. uh what I what I agree with you there. All right. So yeah, Marcus Mariota does what does this mean, Trev? And I'll ask yeah. everybody here as well. What does this mean for Sam Howell? What do he's you third, think this means for Sam Howell? He's a third quarterback on the depth chart. Um mm. they could possibly trade him. I don't know why they would. Um but now he's third on depth chart. That's what that means. Yeah. How how does a guy go from first to third on a depth chart after playing Jesus. 17 games? You get sacked almost 70 times and you have a record of four and thirteen, and you only got your shot because the tenth string guy named Taylor Heineke went to the coach and was like, give the guy a shot. It yeah. wasn't coach's choice. It was the backup quarterback's choice to be like, hey, give this third round, third string guy a chance. And he wowed yeah. you in one game. So, like, it wasn't like he really earned it, I don't believe. I think he, it was given to him. That's how you go from first to third. Yeah. All season. I, I think – I, I kind of think that this is a situation where you almost have to trade him or release him just because it is difficult for a guy to go from first to third. I know. The Marcus Mariota signing – you don't bring a guy in here at six million dollars to be a third string quarterback, right? You, you don't, don't bring no. in Kobe Brissett like they did nope. last year at eight million dollars a year right. to be a third stringer. He's nope. the backup. Yeah. He's he's the backup to the starter. Therefore, that that leaves Sam to where Sam, I understand the importance of having three quarterbacks. That is very important, but I don't think you can have a guy on your team who was the unquestioned starter the entire season and then all of a sudden have him be your third stringer so i think they will trade him or if there's no market then they'll release him because i don't think he's good for this team i'd love to have him as that third string quarterback in name but i just don't Mm. think it's i think it's an untenable situation for him on this team and he'll be traded uh, but a lot of people don't think he'll be traded, but I think he's going to be gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> All right, the guy in the picture, right? Looking right mm-hmm. here, hello, hello, yeah. to hello, hello. Austin Eckler, who is going yeah. to be 29 years old. As For real? Writer. He will be 29 years old at some point during oh. the season. He signed a two-year $8.4 million contract with $3 million signing. Only 4.2 million guaranteed. So his cap number this year is 3.2 million, and next year is 5.1 million. But they do have an out after this year where they'll only have to absorb a one one and a half million dollar cap hit, dead cap hit, if they release him after this season. Uh, he's an undrafted guy. He's obviously an explosive player. There's all kinds of statistics out there. He's a guy that you would pick top five in your fantasy drafts every year because he does everything well. Uh, running the ball, and he's great, uh, obviously, in space, getting him uh, screens and all different kinds of plays. He had 44 total touchdowns in the last three years, but last year was a little bit of a down year uh, because of injuries, and that's kind of what you expect from a running back who gets to be 27, 28, 29, 30 years old, unless your name's Adrian Peterson, and those guys are just a little bit different. But 
he has said, he has told people that he wants to be a third down back Mm -hmm. so that he can extend his career. He can no longer sustain being a guy who run in between the tackles down in and down out. What do you expect from Austin Eckler? First of all, did you like the signing, Trev? And what do you expect from him this year? Yes, I like the signing. We had an all-star in the running back room now. We got a pro bowler, a touchdown machine. I expect touchdowns. I expect exactly what he said he wants his goal to be, a third down back. Mm-hmm. And I think he chose to come here because we're willing to accept that, that he doesn't – you don't have to be the first second. We've got B-Rob. we That's got right. Christian Rodriguez too. Just come in and catch some third downs for us. When we get in the red zone, you can score because we can't score in the red zone. But what we do, we go get a red zone score and touchdown machine. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah, it replaces Gibby for whatever Gibby role was for us the past year or so. He can come and fill that in for us now, and he, he clearly has no problem with it. I'm psh, barely any money. Austin yeah. Eckler to score some touchdowns for us, bro. Like, yeah, I'm about it. I'm about it. Yeah, he is a touchdown machine. And I think what's interesting, if you notice in this picture that we have, right, right to – uh, all the way on the right-hand side as you're looking at it, look, he's got a C on his chest, Trev. As a right. running back, he was a captain. Mm-hmm. He was selected yep. by his peers, by his teammates, to be a captain of the of the L.A. Chargers football team, and that's saying mm-hmm. something to me. That tells me that he's a guy that uh, the other players respect, and he's a leader, and that's something, of course, that this team uh, needs with the culture, coaching yeah. staff and all these new players they're going to have. So I like it because it is a very low-risk deal. Again, it's only uh, – this year's cap hit is only $3.2 million. <laughs> that's, that's and they can get yeah. out of it. <laughs> if, he does, if he is hurt all year and he doesn't yeah. help this team during this season, they, they absorb a $1.5 million cap hit, dead cap hit next year if they let him go. I think it's a fantastic signing. B-Rob left, B-Rob right. And if he doesn't get the requisite uh, ten yards, then throw it to Austin Eckler, and he'll he'll go for forty two yards in the first down. Yeah, we're see, that's, what, that's yeah, we'll be fine. <laughs> we're rolling. So, <laughs> so I like the deal a lot simply because of the money. Uh, if if it'd been somebody that they gave big money to, and he's going to be twenty nine year old running back, I'd have a problem with it. But uh, mm-hmm. I think it's great. I think we we should under keep our expectations at a certain level with some of these guys based on the amount of money, the salary that we're giving these guys and how we can get out of these deals if it doesn't work out. So I like, all right, here's another big one that I want to hear all about. And that's linebacker Frankie Louvu, right? I mean, Frankie Louvu is going to be 28 this year. Okay. So he's a little bit older, but he's a linebacker. Three year, thirty-one million dollars. He got an eleven and a half million dollar signing bonus. Nineteen of that of the money is guaranteed. Um, so he's gonna make three point nine million dollars this year. Again, the, the theme is this year is not much, and he's got uh one of those contracts that they can get out of and not have a huge dead cap hit. Uh he was undrafted out of Washington State. Uh first year as a starter was just this past year in Carolina, oh. right? Um and he had seven sacks with an interception. He's an emotional kind of leader after a, a few years with the Jets. Trev, you you seem to really like this signing. Why do you like linebacker Frankie Louvu here in Washington? He fits what Dan Quinn preached about in his press conference. Fast, physical. He fits what Joe Witt said in his interviews. We're going to play violent. The style of defense we play might not be for everybody. Mm-hmm. And Louvu from the highlight tapes I've seen, displays that. He's a wrecking ball. He's he's about to be 28, but he's in great shape to be 28 mm-hmm. linebacker. Um, knows, knows his position really well, it seems like. And we need that from our linebacking group. We haven't had that kind of fire in a long time. Probably literally since London Fletcher, but we'll get to that soon with another couple of linebackers. Mm. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic about it. I'm hyped. I'm ready to get the ball rolling with him. He's he's lightning in the bottle. Um, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of this deal as well. I think we should temper our expectations again a little bit. He's only started one year. He's played a ton, uh, but he has not 
been a full-time starter, every down linebacker until this past year, which by the way, I believe he played 99% of the defensive snaps last year. He doesn't come out. Yeah. Yeah. He right, right. Come out. Uh, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what you said, which was he wants to be here. He wants to play uh, with this defense. He watched from afar as Dan Quinn's defense in, in Dallas was just flying to the ball everywhere. Uh, he plays with a lot of heart, as Hurley says here. Uh, so uh, Uptown says it's a it's a, a signing. He's an unbelievable motor, physical, quick. Uh, James is the third guy now because, of course, we'll talk about Bobby Wagner here in just a little bit. Um, and as uh, Brian says, my favorite addition so far. So, um, yeah, and, and – and we're going to talk about this more as we go along a little bit with these players that they're signing and whether or not they're going to do a 4-3 or a 3-4. Let me just say this right now. Nobody knows. They're they're going to they be a 5-2. We know yeah. that, though. Yeah. I mean, it might be a 2-5. They're going to put guys in position to make plays. They're not going to be bogged down with sort of a mentality that this is going to be a 4-3 or a 3-4. Uh, long snapper Tyler Ott uh, got a three-year, $4.4 million contract. Love it. Um, who cares? So I, got a No, long bro. Oh, no. It's awesome. We don't have yeah. to draft one. We got a yeah. veteran, and he has familiarity with Tress Way. They go way back to high school days. Sure. So, hey, and he came from the Ravens. We'll, we'll take All right. You know. can, we, uh, can we move yeah. on now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, he does come and from the Ravens. And his Twitter name is Automatic. O T T O M A T. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, I mean, look, it's it's a, a needed signing. He's 32 yeah. years old. Uh, yeah. Long snappers can play forever. Uh, and he was with Baltimore, which had one of the best special teams units in the entire league. Uh, obviously, with the kicker, they've always had great punters. Uh, and you can't do that without a great long snapper. And so I think he's going to shore that up. And it's a fantastic That's signing. Amazing. Because they back to hunting as always. Trust yeah, me, yeah, absolutely. All right, defensive end Dante Fowler Jr. He's going to be thirty Ooh. this year. I don't have details on his contract. Maybe it's come out since I put this list together. But in 2015, he was a third overall pick by Jacksonville. But Washington will be his fifth team. Last two years, he played in Dallas and had a total of eight sacks. He's basically a pass rushing guy. Doesn't do it. He doesn't. Uh, tackle doesn't really stop the run. He's a depth piece to me, um, yep. but he's another guy that has basically followed Dan Quinn, right? He played in Atlanta with Dan Quinn when Dan Quinn was there. And of course in Dallas uh, the last two years when Dan Quinn was there and now Washington with Dan Quinn. Even further back in Florida, he played with Dan Quinn as well. That's right. Exactly. Florida. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that, that he was there when Quinn was there at Florida. Um, so this is a trust thing to me. This is again, yeah. this is not a guy who's going to come in and say, Hey, I was a third overall pick, you know, give me the best locker. And you know what I mean? Like kind of throw his weight around like that. It seems to me that Dan Quinn trusts him and has trusted him for many years. So he must be a good locker room guy. That's kind of the way I look at it. He's not going to dominate football games. Uh, I've seen him in a lot of, um, videos get dominated by running backs when they pick up, you know, when they move slide out to block him and they just kind of stone him. So mm. don't expect too much from Dante Fowler Jr. is what I'm saying. No, I don't either, but he's a player that I think he's been quoted as saying he, he would play with Dan, play for Dan Quinn the rest of his football life. Yeah, If you got somebody who wants to play for your coach like that, I, I think he'll get some kind of production. He trusts – Coach Quinn well enough to put him in positions to him for him to be productive and have a successful career. So, if you got a player that wants to play for your coach and only your coach, mm -hmm. I think that's a I think it's a good signing. That's I, I agree. I think that's a great great signing uh, for depth per, uh, purposes. Because yeah. I mean, yeah. we've talked about it already on the show. And again, if you're new getting in here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and the notification button, of course. Uh, but we've talked about it before with with uh, some of these guys, they want to come here and they want to play with Dan Quinn. They will follow him. They will watch him from afar and say, that's the kind of coach I want to play for. And, and I think that's important. Dante Fowler 
Jr. is one of those guys. All right, we got two left from outside the organization, and then we've got two within. Are there any new updates, Trev, in terms no, of sir. anybody has been signed? All right, no, no, no new no. updates. Um, all right, so uh, the next one is safety Jeremy Chin. He's only 26 years old. One year, $4.1 million contract, right? Mm-hmm. He was a 2020 second-round pick from Carolina. Uh, he's another one of those guys who watched Dan Quinn from afar and said, I want to play for that guy. Problem is he's kind of a tweener, right? He's played linebacker. He's played free safety. He's played strong safety. Uh, he can do all those things, but let's not forget his rookie year in 2020. He finished second in the defensive rookie of the year voting behind our guy, Chase Young. Uh, what do you think of the signing of safety Jeremy Chin? Goodbye, Cam Curl. Oh, that hurts. Um. I think you're right. I though. think we got, if not the same, very similar production that Cam Curl gave us for yeah. a much cheaper rate than what Cam Curl is asking for, what we're willing to give him. I was a fan of Jeremy Chin when um, when he was runner up to Chase Young, like you said, in 2020. Yeah. He was a beast. He was a baller. I've always liked Jeremy Chin. Um, he's a tweener. We need that role for this defense. Apparently, it's going to be violent and fast, so we need some tweeners. And to be honest, he might be a little bit better of a tweener than Cam Curl, in mm. my opinion. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it's a low risk, high reward type deal. Once again, it seems like that should be like the the, the mood of this first wave of free agency. So I love yeah. the pick. Well, we're going to talk that, about that here um, a little bit about the sort of the overall feeling of these moves and what to sort of expect. But let's let's really get to the big one, the most recent and probably the most popular move that everybody has wanted this guy for the last couple of years as he's gotten older. And that's uh, linebacker Bobby Wagner. Look, let, let's just say this about Bobby Wagner. First and foremost, he's a Hall of Famer. Yep. That's the first thing to know about Bobby Wagner. He is going yep. to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Now, he's going to be 34 years old this year. Okay. That's a concern. It's a concern. However, he's on a one-year, $8.5 million contract. Okay? Yeah. This is what he did last year, Trev. At (laughs) age 32 slash 33. He had 183 tackles. He had a (laughs) 91.5 run defense grade, which was second amongst all linebackers. He had an 82.4 overall grade. He played 98% of the snaps um, playing back in Seattle after leaving for a year to go to the Rams. Won a Super Bowl with the Rams. Is that right? It was He was there uh, for that year? I think so, yeah. I, I think, yeah, I uh, think maybe so. that was the year uh, for the Rams. I could be wrong on that. But um, Dan Quinn calls him what, Trev? The best linebacker he's ever coached. Yeah. He calls him the best linebacker he's ever coached. He has been an 11-time All-Pro. Not Pro Bowler, Trev. An 11-time All-Pro. Wait for this. Including the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. He has been a first or second team (laughs) All-Pro the last 10 years. So when he was 33, when he was 32, when he was 31, when he was 30, and on and on and on. He has been an all pro, one of the four best linebackers in the entire league, even at this age. I think this is a fantastic signing. It's just worldly. But only, again, only because of it's a one year, eight and a half million dollar deal. If they had signed him to like a three year, $30 million contract, I would not be happy. But this is a fantastic. Um, contract. They went, Trev, they went from, and I give credit to our buddy George Carmi, who put this out there on Twitter. Mm -hmm. They went from um, David Miracle Whip and Cody Barton to now they have Frankie Louvu and Bobby Wagner as their linebackers. How massive have these Linebacker moves Ben for Washington. It's 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 what we've been asking for for the past four or five seasons. 
And it's really hard to fathom that we are just now getting linebackers when our former head coach was a linebacker Hmm. himself. Hmm. Okay? That's so wild. And to think that he picked Jamin Davis out of his four years as his linebacker of the of the whatever. Yeah. It's a it's a new day. It's a miracle. It's awesome. We have linebackers now. And the thing I, I know the age thing is something, but it to me it's nothing because of what he did last year in the past ten years. Mm. Age is literally nothing but a number to Bobby Wagner. And it's a different level of hype for me when we get these veteran linebackers because when we got a John Bostic, I was hyped, but it was like it's John Bostic. Tail end of his career. Thomas mm. Davis. Oh, we got Thomas Davis coming in mm. to be the leader. Joke. Joke. Waste. Yes. But now it's like we got another older guy in the locker room, but it's Bobby Wagner. All pro Bobby Wagner. Hall of Famer Bobby, Bobby Wagner, you know? Yeah. You know, it's, so it's – it's a different pedestal of, of old vet linebackers when it comes to Bobby Wagner and then Thomas Davis and John Bostix and the David Mayos and the, whoever else you brought in here. Yeah. I'm, I'm ecstatic. I called it two days ago on Twitter. You did. It didn't, I didn't, it didn't happen on the day I said it's going to happen, but I said we were, we we're going to sign Bobby Wagner next. The next day I said, I still have faith it didn't happen. And today I happened to look at the group chat and Nathan's like Bobby Wagner. And I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah. I look, I'm, like, I'm hyped. Um, we're back. <laughs> we yeah. got a squad. Yeah. I think, um, I think you're right. I think this is, again, this is a fantastic sign. This is the kind of guy they, that they need, but I want to ask you, what does that do? Of course, it all depends on what sort of defense they're going to be playing, but what does right. that, what does that say? Or what is, what's going to happen to Jamin Davis? He's going to learn up in his fourth year of his rookie contract so this is a they're not good they didn't give him a franchise tag so uh so he's going to be in his fourth year what does that mean for him now we're going to see a different version of jamin davis that we've seen the past three or four years he's going to learn from a guy like bobby wagner at mm. the he's going to yeah. learn from a guy like joe witt and dan quinn he's got three defensive geniuses well, maybe not geniuses, but great defensive minds in one organization now to learn from. And we might see things that will be untapped for him that maybe yeah. he's been trying to do, but the previous regime was like, no, you're more of a side-to-sideline guy. Like, you know, the, the, nah, we might see some things that unleashed in him that we've been waiting for it to happen for a while. I'm happy for Jamin Davis. I'm happy. <laughs> oh, sorry, yes, and Ken Norton Jr. So I mean, good good job, no Tommy, with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's see. So, uh, Gus did correct me that um, that he went. Bobby Wagner went to the Rams after the year after they uh, won the Super Bowl. So he didn't get his Super Bowl with the Rams, but of course he did get one with uh, Seattle there and Russell Wilson leading the way for them. <laughs> Russell Wilson. That makes me laugh. All right. So that's everybody that they've signed from outside the organization, and of course they signed two from within the organization, two of their free agents out of the 24. They have only signed two of them so far. One of them being Jeremy Reeves. We all love Jeremy Reeves. Um, uh, The coaches love him. And I think somebody put it out there also that the amazing thing about Jeremy Reeves is that he's now in his third coaching regime. He's had two different owners, three different general managers, three different head coaches, and he's still the guy. He's still the constant because that shows you what kind of guy he is, what type of player he is. He's the kind of guy that every team needs um, that he can. It doesn't matter what sort of leaders or uh, coaches that you have on this team. He fits any anywhere that he goes. So I think it's a great signing. What do you think of Jeremy Reeves re-signing? It's pretty incredible. I didn't see it happening. Um a player to be re-signed for a two-year extension at coming off of a torn ACL that he suffered early in the season with yeah. a new, a whole new regime. That's, that's what, like John Kimes, that's rare. So yeah. kudos to him. I mean, he's a special teams player, third or fourth safety on the depth chart always. Been cut. You know, we all know his journey with us. Practice squad, active. Practice squad, active. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So that's that's... Don't know how much he's really going to contribute, 
Um, but hey, he's all pro Revo for a reason, so that's awesome. Shout out okay, to yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm happy he's back again. He's a good dude. Tress Way is really happy. They're very close. Mm-hmm. Um, Tress Way better watch out for the uh, for the um, what, what's the guy the the guy who comes in and cuts you? What do they call that guy? Grim Reaper. Not the Grim Reaper, but the I forgot the nickname. But anyway, he better watch out for that dude. Uh, Jameson Crowder, who yes. left for a few years. You know, it was originally he was a third rounder. Is that right for mm-hmm. Washington? Uh, quite a few years back, left for a few years, came back last year and was very productive as a third, fourth, fifth uh, wide receiver. What, what do you think about them re-signing Jamison Crowder? We got our punt returner. And I thought he was a very, very serviceable punt returner. Yeah. Something we have, we've been lacking for the since he was here for the first time pretty much. So I'm happy with it. He is a nice security blanket for quarterbacks too as a third or fourth, fifth receiver. Yeah. Um, uh, he's. I'm not looking for starter stats. I don't think anyone is. But like I said, we solidified our punt returner and probably wide receiver five or four. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm I think it's a good cool. signing as well. I don't think yeah. it's anything to uh, to crow about. Crowder. No. C R O W D. It's not anything to you know get too hyped about. But mm-hmm. he's again. He's a he's a glue guy. He's He's just the type of guy. He's got good hands. Uh, he's the type of guy that you need on your team. So uh, sure. I'm happy that Jameson Crowder is back. Um, and so that's everybody again. That's um, 15 guys in the last three days that they've signed. Nobody's getting more than $5 million against the cap this year. That's that, awesome. Um, except for maybe, well, I guess um, Bobby Wagner. I, I take that back. Uh, depending on what his cap hit is this year. Uh, could be up to eight and a half million dollars this year, and then maybe Mariota's might get the six million, might be good. But basically, you have nobody that they signed today that is getting double figures against the cap this year. Right. And I think what that says, Trev, and tell me if you kind of agree with this. With all these signings, some names. There are some names out there, of course, with Wagner, Chin, uh, Mariota, Eckler. Uh, those guys are named Zach Ertz. Mm-hmm. I think this is a team that is not concerned about winning in 2024. Oh, because these are all guys that in 2024, I knew it. More than half of these guys are probably going to be gone. There are when? Not- there are very few sort of, um, as we always talk about that word, the building blocks. How many of these guys are building blocks for a L- long run? Luvu, Jeremy Chin, our center, our guard. But Jeremy Chin is a one-year deal. It's a prove-it deal. All right, these right. are prove-it deals. I'm just saying how many guys have been signed to be a – Building block. Our center. Center. Maybe Armstrong. Armstrong. Hmm. Everybody else is. And maybe Luvu. Yeah, Luvu for sure, yeah. Yeah. Everyone else is on a prove it type. Yeah. See what we got this year. See what we can do. And if it's something you're cool with, we'll talk extensions next year. Exactly. Which is, I mean, which is. Kind of what it has to be when you have a total rebrand of the re- of regime. When you Agreed. have a whole new owner and front office and coaching staff, you kind of have to go get the guys you coached or used to coach or guys that you coached before that, you know, were injury riddled, but you know that they, they can produce when healthy to kind of say, hey, come prove to me why I'm, I'm still choosing you after your injury history or your lack of production history that, that you mm-hmm. once had in your career. Yeah, I think that's what you have to do when you have that. If we had I, this coaching staff was here for like two or three years already, and we're doing this, that says oh, that's that a whole different concerning. language. That would be super concerning. Yeah, I think um, I think this is exactly right to me. He said he was going to build through the draft, and what he has done with the ninety some million dollars that he had available. Talking about Adam mm-hmm. Peters here. 90 some million dollars 
We don't know the exact numbers because contracts take a while to get those exact numbers to come in. Uh, but we're talking about possibly having close to $50 million still available for this year. And still plenty again for the years that that are to come. But you take all of those guys, all of those contracts, and you still leave room for guys who are going to get cut loose. Right. We saw um, who's the dude from the Cardinals, the defensive tackle today. Late oh, this uh, did, oh, DJ Humphrey is the offensive tackle? Yeah. Right. Or, mm-hmm. Sorry, offensive tackle. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that they should go get him, no. but they have the money to do that if a guy mm-hmm. comes free, a Mike Williams from the Chargers. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. He, he, he was not it's available days ago. Right. Right. Available. Right. And so they have to keep money available for those guys who are going to get, you know, be set free that you had no idea that that was going to happen. And you also have to have the rookies. And I think because they have nine picks, because they have six within the top 101, they have to, um, they have to have the money for that. So that's probably, I'm just spitballing here, $25 million that they have to set aside. They still got a ton of money to be able to fill out this roster with dudes and not Mm -hmm. with Nick Gates and Andrew Wiley and, and um, who are the guards that Trey Turner and uh, Andrew, Andrew Nowell, Nowell. right? Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. Those are not the guys that they're going to have to fill their roster out with. They're going to fill their guys out with Jeremy Chins and um, Bobby Wagner's uh, and frankly, yeah, Frankie exactly. And, and so that's why I think it's super smart what they're doing, but let's not get carried away in that. These are not guys that are going to be here long term. Most of them, right? Are not Some of them can surprise us and could, you know, stick around for the next two or three years, which would be cool. I also think the the talent we brought on makes any draftee it gives them a better picture of what they're coming to. Mm-hmm. Like when you go to the pro days and you and you talk to these players at the combine and you tell them, you know, da 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 da. You know, social media is a thing. These these college draft these guys are not sitting there not looking at social media, looking at it every day. And they're mm-hmm. and you know, daggone well, they're watching free agency happen right now, just as much as we are as a fan, to see where they might end up and who's there, and if you know yeah. some kind of because you know some kind of back behind the scenes talk goes on between now and the draft. It has to happen. Sure. Absolutely. So I just think that we're kind of setting it up for the future of our future that's coming. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can look at uh, look at all these guys, and I keep staring at this list of the guys that they signed. I mean, it would not be surprising if Bobby Wagner, Jeremy Chin, Dante Fowler, Austin Eckler, Marcus Mariota, Cleland Farrell, Brandon McManus, and Zach Ertz are all not here <laughs> in the 25 season. They're not going to be Stop here. Stop it. I'm just, but I'm not saying that's a bad thing, Trev. I'm just saying that let's not get carried away with these guys thinking that they're going to lead this team to, you know, to the next level. I don't necessarily see that happening, but they but, got but guys on good deals. We did. And also the guys that we got on good deals are also young. Yeah. They're young. For which sure. Which gives them another advantage of, of making the prove a deal more worthwhile than a Bobby Wagner. And judging by Bobby Wagner's tweet, by the way, today, Seattle, you know we always do this. Um, I'll miss you guys. If you need me, I'll be around. Which I think he's going to come here for a year, get his stats up, and go play Seattle or retire in <laughs> Seattle one more time. Like, yeah. Why else would you say that in your tweet? So right, I don't right. see Bobby Wagner being here long term for sure. But the other guys, I really do have a like. I have a, they have a chance. Jeremy Chen. These are all prove it deals because these are all guys who were good but then got injury plagued. And right. So we're giving them a shot. So there's a chance, but I agree with you. Like half of them won't be here next year. Yeah. And and also, well, let me say this first about a guy like Jeremy Chin. If he does work out, then you do have the obviously the chance to re-sign him to a long-term deal, being that he's already here. But just kind of another glass half empty. Okay. Of all these signings, there are guys that are not going to work out at all. I mean, 
who will be just complete bus who Bro. will get cut in training camp or Bro. something. I'm just saying. Can I tell you? Hold on. 15 excellent free agent signings. It doesn't work that way. Stoner. Hmm. It's going to work that way for us. Oh. Because we just we just flipped twenty five percent of our we just changed twenty five percent of our roster, bro. Yeah. If we cut these people, who's going to be left for us to replace these these guys with? This is the reason why we got these guys because we didn't have anybody. Yeah. We're, we're signing depth guys right now, so if we cut these depth guys now or in training camp, who we got after that? Yeah. I, I we're keeping them all, Stoner. Be okay. be optimistic. Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to the give list, that point. I that like the, point, the signings. But the point, like another point is the list that of all the signings, all could potentially be here after mm-hmm. training camp. Yeah. I don't think we got guys for training camp purposes. I think we got guys for seasonal purposes. Okay. Uh, and also what I did like about the guys who did get the bigger contracts, right? The Bia Dish, the Dorrance <laughs> Armstrong. And the Nick Allegretti. Yeah. And, and maybe you could say Frankie Louvu. Frankie, you know, yes. Um, but he doesn't fit sort of what I'm about to say in that okay. these guys are in the trenches, guys. Right. Which is people just, they they want the pretty shiny toy that does cool things like the Austin Ecklers of the world. But what wins in, in the NFL and what loses Trenches. in the NFL is the ability to control the line of scrimmage from both sides. And they got guys who can do that, and they yes. got them long-term. Yes. So that's go. the part I love okay. about there these signings. That's why I love the Bia Dish and the Armstrong and the Allegretti signings because these are trench guys, and these are guys that are going to be here longer and are going to help you or are going to decide games. Okay, Austin Eckler might decide a game, but these other guys are going to decide multiple games. <laughs> the way they control the line of scrimmage. Austin Eckler is going to decide like a about. lot of games. Give me what this is the last thing in the game before we move on to the cool down, looking ahead to the draft and and even more potential signings. What I want is a grade, mm-hmm. not an A, B, or C grade. What I want is a grade to a hundred. So you can do oh. like I give it a 85.6 as an example. Okay. That's what I want to hear from everybody, including you, Trev. What grade, what number grade do you give this free agent class so far? The 15 guys, 13 outside of the organization. Zach Ertz, Tyler Biadish, Dorrance Armstrong, Brandon McManus, Cleveland Farrell. There's a guy who I don't think is going to work out, by the way. Uh, Nick Allegretti, Marcus Mariota, Austin Eckler, Frankie Louvu, Tyler Ott. Dante Fowler Jr., Jeremy Chin, Bobby Wagner, Jeremy Reeves, and Jamison Crowder. Trev, what grade do you give it? Number grade, 1 to 100. I give it an 87. 87? I like that. Um, Because, I mean, we were 4-13 and 13 last year. Literally yeah. everybody we signed is an upgrade at the position that they're playing for us. It really is. I mean, some people are are debating Austin Eckler and Antonio Gibby. Eckler is a major upgrade over Gibby. Say what you want. Major upgrade. That's that's um, true. We got football players. We didn't mm-hmm. go out and get the the flashy Patrick Queen name. Not saying he's not a football player, but sure. we didn't go get the – you know what I mean. We didn't get the well, – that, That's, Park that's Queens. kind of we the flashy the, new car thing. Yeah. Patrick yeah. Queen is. Whereas we, Frankie yeah. Louvre is the – you know the 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 semi truck drives a pen, yeah drives a Pinto to work but he's gonna get the job done just as good <laughs> yeah. as somebody pulling up in a Mercedes so yeah we got football players we got players that want to play for this organization for this coaching staff that hasn't happened in I don't know how long probably since before I was even able to say the word football so eighty seven it's a B McManus. Probably signing is keeping it from an A because I guess we didn't upgrade from Joey Sly, but in a sense we did, but too close to call. But yeah, dude, we just we got football players. We okay. got we 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 got more competitive since Sunday. I'll say that right oh, now. Oh, big time. We got way more competitive for our division since Sunday. And that to me deserves a B to an A. So all right. So um I was I was putting kind of everybody's number grade. 
that responded here. And yeah, I mean, I'll go through this list and and I'll say like Zach Ertz, I think is is a wash with Logan Thomas, the, the same guy. Be a dish. Is a, I mean, he is, but uh, be a dish is a massive upgrade at center. Dorrance yeah. Armstrong is better than massive. Chase Young, but I wouldn't put him better than uh, Montez no. Sweat. Hold on, I don't count them boys anymore because they didn't finish the season with Washington. Okay, fair. Okay, I'm not counting. Massive no upgrade. Chase yes, over James Williams, Two Hill. Yes, KJ, KJ Henry and Andre Jones. Andre Jones. Yes. All right. Um, I, I'll, I'll give you that on a technicality. I'll give you that. Okay. Uh, Brandon McManus, I think, is a wash with Joy Slide. Same guy. <laughs> uh, Cleveland Farrell, you would have to kind of. Um, he, he's a rotational guy. He played a hit of Chase Young in San Francisco as a rotational guy. If that says anything about Chase Young, hot take alert: Cleveland Farrell doesn't make the roster. Make the fifty-three. All right. Um, Nick Allegretti is a massive upgrade from Sadiq no. Charles slash Chris Paul. <laughs> yes. Um, Mariota, I think, is a downgrade from Jacoby Brissett. I think Jacoby Brissett is an excellent backup quarterback. So is Mariota. Mariota is, I think, is hot garbage. He I, almost I don't beat like us. Him, I know, but Trev, he's bad. He's not a good quarterback. That's why he's a backup. What ha- what happened in his in that uh, quarterback show on Netflix? What happened at the end of the year in Atlanta? What happened? We never did figure out what happened. Just all of a sudden he was gone. That, yeah, yeah, that's the kind of guy I want on my team, a guy who just disappears. All right. Uh, <laughs> Austin Eckler, as you said, I think is an upgrade over oh, um, uh, Gibby. Um, Gibby. Yep. Frankie Louvu is, is I mean, it's not even close how much of an no. upgrade over uh, Cody Barton. Yes. Um, Tyler Ott is a massive Massive upgrade Massive. over Cheeseman. I mean, Cheeseman was so bad, he got cut in the middle of the year. A long snapper. That's, that's real bad. He, and then demoted to the very last player on the – what list was that? Like the available – I don't know. He was dead last. What list I think was it was that? just PFF grade for long snapper. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was, he was dead, dead last. last. Um, so that that's a massive upgrade. Dante Fowler Jr. as a backup defensive end. I'm not a Dante Fowler Jr. guy, but obviously Dan Quinn is a Dante Fowler Jr. guy, Which and I'm makes a, Dan you a Dante Quinn Dante guy. Fowler. So makes you a Dante Fowler Jr. guy. Yeah, uh, Jeremy Chin, Cam Curl, I okay. think is a wash. Yeah, yeah okay. um, and of course Bobby Wagner over Cody Barton or David Mayo or whoever Kalik Hudson, whoever was in there. <laughs> so you've basically gotten much, much better at every position. Well, at all with all of these guys. So that to me makes it a a great few days um in Washington in our free agent signings. Let's uh, get ready to move on here to uh the cool down where it's still hot stuff to talk about, Trev, because we got to talk about what's coming up next with the commanders to include. Free agency is not done. It's not like today was it, and then we're all done. There's still plenty of guys out there, and also we got to talk about the draft and how some of these guys affect Washington's draft decisions. So we'll do that here in the cool down. All right, appreciate uh, everybody being here once again in the cool down of episode number 164 of, oh, I got to change the thing. You didn't tell me to change the thing again. I forgot. Uh, of um, Ref the District here again. Appreciate all the people who've been in here. We've had over 600 folks in here. Make sure you all hit that like button. Can I get an update from somebody on how many likes we have uh, on this particular show today? We're trying to set a record, which is awesome. That means the excitement is there for this team. And we are here for it. Trev is here. I'm here. The Stoner. We don't even have our names up. Did you notice that as well? I haven't had them up for the past few times. Oh, really? Here, let's put yeah, them. There we go. There we are. Stoner uh, and Trev. There's where you can find us on Twitter. Of course, Nathan is taking the week off. He's uh, he's doing some cool stuff. I don't know if he wants me to say what it is until later. So, um, uh, so I'll let him decide to say it later on. But he has taken the 
night off. If you haven't had a chance to check all of our other videos that we've had in terms of the Marcus Mariota video and some of the other guys that Washington has signed, the Ecklers and Louvus and Allegretti's and all that, Nathan did a fantastic job the last couple of days getting those videos out there. And so make sure you check those out as always. Trev, it's time to look ahead to what's next mm -hmm. for Washington. There are still plenty of free agents still out there. Yes. What would you like to see Washington do? Let's let's kind of play fantasy GM here. And let's say money is not an option of those guys who are available. Who would you like to see Washington go after? A cornerback. Mm. But the ones that are available are all either getting up there in age or the number two or number three guy on their current roster. So yeah. that's tough. But I would like to see a nice veteran cornerback since we're rebuilding that kind of culture here, bringing vets to help teach these young guys. And I know people are saying draft a left tackle. People are saying go get a left tackle. I'm on board with either one. Um, we've already made moves to help the rookie quarterback we're going to bring in here by by signing a, a, a center and a, a nice third down back. Um, so, yeah, free agency, go get you a left tackle if you can at a, at a good price. Another one of these vet minimum deals or approve it year deals would be wonderful. If not, uh, I hear the left tackle position is deep in this year's draft. Mm -hmm. So we could draft one and he can learn from the vet guys that we brought on just now for the offensive line to help yeah. him the quarterback as well. Um, yeah, but you go get a cornerback. I don't think the draft is too quarter cornerback friendly. Um, I don't want to repeat what we did last year. Go get a cornerback with <laughs> like our number 36 or 40 pick or whatever the next highest pick we have is. So, um, yeah, go get your vet QB, Stefan Gilmore, Xavier Howard, Brock Yassin. Um, I don't know. Somebody what like that. What about the dude from the Giants that people have been talking about? Yeah, I, I, I've never even heard of him. Much, we play yeah. him twice a year, and I've know, never right? heard of him until right now. I, I was going to say the same thing, Trev. Uh, and but all like, of a sudden, everybody's hyping him up. But then you go back and look at the history of our new coaching staff, Deron Bland. Who the hell was that? Now everybody sure? knows who Deron Bland is. That's fair. Well, at this point, it's like, do we go get a no name and he becomes a name because of our coaching staff? Or do we follow the lead and go get a vet cornerback that has had previous stints with the coaching staff or an established career already? Ah, that's yeah. tough. I think you do sign a vet, a free agent cornerback, and then you either draft or sign left tackle. I'm cool with either one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I like uh I like where you're going with all of those. Oh, oh. What? And you need a big body wide receiver. And yeah, I, I think you do. You can find I mean, that in the draft. Maybe you can find that free agency. The, the the draft is super heavy on wide receivers. I don't know necessarily I didn't break it down between big body receivers and smaller right. guys, but I mean there might they might have six receivers go in the first round this year, which is crazy. But there is some serious talent in coming out of the draft, serious talent at offensive tackle. Uh, like you said, uh, Trev, but I mean, there's, there's a lot to be, uh, to be excited about for this team and everything that they've done and still having those. And I might, I might've misstated. I'm not sure if it's five or six draft picks in the top 101, uh, picks. Is it six and 101? And then, um, of course, you got the number two overall. You got nine picks overall in this draft. And I think this is, I think what they've done so far also in the guys that they've taken is they've kind of showed their hand at what they're going to do in the draft, mm. right? They're going quarterback at number two. Is there anybody yeah. who, who thinks otherwise? Uh, but they've basically got two offensive tackle positions to fill. I mean, there's one. The left tackle is a hundred billion percent. You need that because you don't have anybody. Yes. No. And your right tackle, you've got Wiley. And if you want to uh, go with Wiley I again, think next year, I, think I think he's he staying. Well, he might stay, but I think you need to draft a guy to replace him as well. So yeah. this is what I would do, Trev. I have the number two overall pick. I have the thirtieth, thirty-sixth pick, and the fortieth pick. So I've got three in the top forty. This is what I'm doing, and then I want to hear what you're doing. I'm drafting Jaden Daniels at two. Okay. 
and I'm drafting offensive tackle at 36. Okay. I'm drafting offensive tackle at 40. Oh, that's what I'm doing. And I'm so I'm getting my dynamic quarterback, and then I'm getting him bookends on both sides. I've already got my interior offensive line solidified, and now I get two guys in the top 40 at offensive tackle, and we might go to the Super Bowl. Okay, you know, I'm getting a little carried away, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe in a I few years. What, Super Bowl. what are you doing? First, let me give a shout out to uh Mike here. Uh, get your um, thing ready there. Your uh, bow, 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 bow. Yeah, for the two dollar uh, super chat there, and then also another two dollar super chat. He says, "Get Marvin Harrison Jr." What are you doing, Trev? And number two, are you getting Marvin Harrison Jr. Your big body wide receiver, and then trading back and doing something different than what I just said? No. What do no, you? No, I am taking a quarterback at number two. We have the number two pick, and our biggest hole of the entire franchise is the quarterback position. Yeah. We have a chance to solidify that with the three top QBs right there at number two. I'm taking Jaden Daniels. I'm taking Jaden Daniels. And at number 36, I am also taking the offensive tackle. They're they're loaded with those this year. And at 40, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing at 40. I don't know if hmm. I'm taking another tackle, if I'm taking a wide receiver, if I'm Gus taking... is not taking another tackle. I can tell you that right now. He's not having two uh rookie tackles. I am. Um I draft I, I draft for need. I know everybody likes to draft uh best player available. I'm a draft for need guy. Because if the best player available is a uh for example, it's kind of hard with watch, but let's say it's a linebacker right now. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Yeah, I'm not drafting the linebacker because I've just picked up two linebackers in the offseason in mm. the free agency. Mm-hmm. I'm drafting for need. Now, I'm not saying overdraft for need, but that's the way I do. But I I get people's things. All right. Who are you taking at 40 then, Trev? If you've got your quarterback and you've got your okay. offense, who are you drafting at 40? Edge. Edge? Go get you. Even though you picked up three edges in free agency. Yeah, but the three edges you picked up are not outside of Doran Armstrong. They're on prove it deals. Yeah. Uh, Farrell and who else did we get? Uh, Cleveland Farrell and uh, Dante Fowler Jr. Yeah, prove it deals. We need somebody to solidify that position for when they're gone, they can step up and take and have it be their own position. So, edge. So you're going uh, QB, OT, DE. Edge. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. But again, let's just say the the best player available is a center. This is a perfect example. What if right. the best player available at 40 is a center and you just signed B a dish for three years and $33 million? Are you drafting a center? Is he versatile? Has he played right tackle before? He's a center. No, I'm I'm not taking okay. it. Exactly. So that's why I think you should always draft for need um, or, you know, yeah. what, another, uh, another guard. And you've already, you've got Cosme and Allegretti. No. I mean, I'm just not no. doing that. At that not doing when I get a guy in the top 50, and this is actually for me, it holds true for the top 100. I need that guy to be a day one starter. Yes. Not a he needs to be a need. Yeah. I'm not drafting Fedarian Mathis. Within the second round, when I've got Deron and Jonathan Allen, what are that we I doing? Stupidest pick in the history. Not nothing against Fedarian Mathis, although he's kind of played it out that way. But it was just drafting a depth guy in the second round. They don't make sense to me. But you know, I'm I'm me, and you guys are no. I, I'm with you on that. All right, so I'm going to put you on the spot, Trev, and I'm going to ask everybody right now. Everything that you know so far, draft is tomorrow okay. at, at set 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, Where's the draft this year? Detroit? Indy? Where's the draft this year? Chicago? Yeah. I can't remember. Where, is it Vegas? No, the Super Bowl is in Vegas. Is it? Is it Detroit? It might be Detroit. Anybody know where the draft is this year? Detroit. It is Detroit? All right. Yep. So tomorrow's the draft in Detroit, 7 p.m. Yep. Number two pick, mm-hmm. who are you taking right now? Number two pick, who am I taking? Yeah. Jaden Daniels. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. 
Who did the bear? What did the Bears do with number one pick? Caleb Williams. They did. Yep. Okay, then I'm going Jaden Daniels. All right. What is everybody else? Uh, you know, here in the chat, who is everybody taking? Caleb Williams is gone. He's at one. Who is everybody taking it to? I got Jaden Daniels. Trez got Jaden Daniels. Two Jaden. Daniels. has got Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Rogers got Jaden Daniels. Everybody's got Jaden Daniels. I think. Yep. Uh, Chris has got Jaden Daniels. Oh, there's a Drake May. There's a, there is a Drake May in there. So I get there's it. Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> right. There's we don't have nobody to throw him the ball, though, guys. <laughs> yeah. Mariota's not throwing the ball to him. Yeah. You're right. Are you going to – is, is uh, J.J. McCarthy going to be there at 36? No. McCar- no. J.J. McCarthy's going He's top going 10. to the Raiders. Top 12. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so, yeah, we man, got no. a lot of Harrison Sorry. and Daniels. We got trade backs. Uh, I get it. I, I wouldn't mind trade back. Code Talker's got uh, Jaden Daniels. Uh, Brian, I love this uh, idea. Whoever Adam Peters, you're Adam Peters. I'm trying to don't sit on the fence. Don't be a Nathan and, and not say who you want to uh, get. Exactly. Yeah. So, Marvin okay. Harrison with Sam Howell. No, I'm sorry. Sam Howell is not going to be the starting quarterback in 2024. I'm so sorry. Who is, uh, again, looking ahead, we obviously know that there are draft picks to come. Yeah. But if you look at this team right now, who is your starting defensive backfield if you are starting the traditional two corners and two safeties? Oh, man. Right now with all the guys that they have picked up or not picked up. Forbes is cornerback one, and all you're right. going to have to make St. Juice cornerback two because he's still on the team as of right now. All right. Um. Jeremy Chen is your safety that comes down and plays in the box. Does that still count as defensive backfield? Uh, he's yeah, but he's going to be one of your two safeties. And then you got Derek uh, Quan Martin. You got Quan or Forrest or are you okay with that defensive backfield? No, no, we need to go get another safety. You need to go get another safety, so you don't like Derek Forrest or no. Quan Martin. I like Quan Martin. Keep Quan. Hmm. Derek Forrest, he, he Defoe can go. Percy Butler can kick rocks. I mean, he was a fifth rounder, know. wasn't he? Or maybe he's he was a, a fourth depth rounder. piece. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We need we need more safety help. We don't. I mean, your safeties right now team. on the roster are Forrest, Chin, no. Quan no. Martin, oh. Percy Butler, and Jeremy Reeves. I mean, that's his position. Yeah. Okay. A, no offense, Jeremy Reeves. Congrats on your extension, but no, nah, we need. We need a ball tracking, deep ball yeah. safety. Yeah. We don't have those. A lot of our yeah. safeties like to come up and play in the box a lot. Yep. Because that damn Buffalo nickel that Ron Rivera was preaching about, that's the kind of safeties he, he brought on was the ones that could play Buffalo nickel. <laughs> what about the deep ball, Ron? <laughs> right. What about the deep ball? And the most explosive plays they <laughs> gave up last year, like double the second uh, team. Come on. The most explosive plays. Well, I, and I think that's fair, but and I think you got to get a corner, like you said. I don't think yeah, you do. St. Juiced is an everyday outside corner. I think he can help you on the inside, you know, in a nickel package or whatever. Forbes is definitely going to be your, your number one or, you know, your yeah. one or two. Give him another chance, and we'll see what this coaching staff can do. I'm like, him. yeah, him and Joe Witt, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see yeah. what that's going to be about for real. I think overall, Trev, I'm going to give you my overall, and then I want to ask you your overall before we get out of here uh, for okay. the night. This has been, I mean, our hottest show, live yeah. show ever. So yeah. appreciate, again, everybody who's been in here. But overall, there's a lot of optimism with this team, and I think what they've done is so different than what we're used to around here. We are used mm-hmm. to the – uh, you know, the Hainsworths. And, I mean, that was a long time ago when they were doing those kind of deals. But that's what we were used to. Uh, but Lattie. even in the last few years, it was still – you signed the the guy who got the most money defensively, which was William Jackson the third. You signed the guy who was, like, top five offensively with the most money with Curtis Samuel. And they've yep. done none of that with this new regime. They have signed team-friendly contracts. They've gotten guys who want to come here and prove themselves – with the leadership that this team has. So that part I'm super, super excited about. 
and I can't wait for the draft. And but we just have to keep our expectations a little bit muted in terms of what they're going to do in 2024. Sooner Let's stop, not get dude. carried away with what I think is going to be a rookie quarterback and two rookie offensive tackles and still some issues possibly in the secondary uh, with this team. We're going to so win more than four games. We're going to win more than four games. But let's talk about seven or eight wins as constructed right now. But we've got a lot more time left in free agency. So uh, so we'll see what happens going forward. And, of course, the draft. Trev, what's, give me your overall assessment of what has happened with Washington in the last few days. Hell of a first step for the new regime. Right direction. We're in the right direction, uh, considering what we just got done going through for the past four years and last year, which is probably the worst season of the past four years we had. Um, great step. It's calculated. It's smart. It's knowledgeable. We finally got people making football people making football decisions. Mm -hmm. um, they said they weren't going to do any splash big money, and they've kept to their word so far, which is a great sign because if, you know, they said that went out and got Patrick Queen and got, um, I don't know who, like some Calvin Ridley and somebody else, and we left with $20 million by Thursday, it's like, mm -hmm. well, you're re like, what'd you do? So I'm loving it. Yeah. Calculated. It's, it's football mindseted. Um, keep going. Don't. Don't let off the gas. Keep going. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Don't let off the gas. It's not over. We're I, gonna there's I, gonna be more moves, bro. But like, they, look at how many people we've signed in three days. That's a lot of conversations mm -hmm. <laughs> from the legal time to now to be had sure. to get these people to commit to you for whether it's a year or three years. And that's shout out to the to the recruiters, Adam Peters, his team. Like they, he's getting national recognition on NFL Network about winning free agency thus far. Like, mm -hmm. and it's it's just I'm amazed, kind of surprised. Wasn't expecting this kind of progress coming from Adam Peters. I knew it, we we were in good hands, but now we get to see how this man works, like he did in San Francisco, Pfft, bro. I'm legit excited. I know we're excited every year because we yeah. get Sam Howell throwing spirals or, you know, we got Chase Young is healthy again or mm -hmm. Montez Sweat's back to getting sacks. But, like, no, now it's, like, legit real optimism. We're back to being a football organization again. And get ready. Get we're ready. Coming. We're yeah. Coming. Uh, I'm going to leave everybody with this. Uh, before we get out of here, uh, Kevin Cole on Twitter at Kevin Cole underscore 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 underscore. There's three underscores. That's a weird one. But anyway, uh, the 2024 off season improvement index. Okay. Which what they do is they give a points based value based on off season transact transactions and projected draft value. So the draft value comes into it, not the players. Uh, so you compare the projections for 2024 with the updated rosters versus unchanged 2023 rosters. And they look at all of the teams and Washington is the number two most improved team in the NFL <laughs> behind only the Atlanta Falcons. Let's go, bro. That's because so, they got Kirk Cousins. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that, that helps though, That's right? It. You, get a, it does. you get a quarterback. I, I don't understand yeah. Atlanta. I mean, they passed on Lamar Jackson, but decided to go with Kirk Cousins, which, you know, it's Lamar perfect. Jackson's last year, Kirk Cousins this yeah. year. Um, and then you look at some of the, now look, you can only go so far. So most of the teams that are going to improve the most are, are bad teams from last year. Yeah. But there are still teams that are up there like Green Bay and Pittsburgh, uh, Jacksonville, uh, all playoff teams that are up there, but some of the losers, basically the Cowboys are fourth worst. The Eagles are like seventh worst. So yeah, good for them. Hopefully good. they just keep on losing and losing. And we hate them yeah. as usual. appreciate everybody being in the show uh, yeah. today. I, I'd go through all the names, but oh my God, we had so many in here. We had over 600 at one point. Again, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe and notification bu button. Uh, check us out here in Ref the District. Uh, we do a ton of work, and and we love putting out this content. Um, we do it all the time. Is just this week, I think we put out 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven videos plus a live show. Anytime a free agent gets signed, we're putting out uh, our opinion on on who that person is. So keep checking in with us. If you listen on audio, make sure you leave a rating and review. Uh, we appreciate all of that. We we don't take it for granted uh, from everybody being here. And again, I'd like to go through all the names, but there is just so many. We love the usual guys who are in here, uh, Roger and Lockdown and Uptown and Gus and Grim and JG. And, and I don't want to leave anybody out, but we appreciate uh, uh, all of you guys. 245 likes. I believe that's a record uh, for our live show. We knew it was going to be a hot one, and we couldn't do it without all of you uh, being in here. Uh, again, Brian and DC Dave and 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 Gregory, all you guys, we appreciate um, uh, you guys doing that for us. Again, this has been brought to you by uh, Bet Online. We are a proud member of the Believe Network. If you get a chance, check out uh, Believe, who has all kinds of fantastic shows with some of the biggest people in the game. I mean, we had Jason Campbell from Believe come on here. We had Carl Banks come on with us. Uh, all kinds of names because they're all part of the Believe Network. And so that's what they do for us. And and we appreciate them as well. And uh, listen, uh, go to Bet Online, do your thing there. And Don't Sleep Energy, great sponsors uh, for Ref the District. Again, we appreciate everybody. Uh, Uptown, let's uh, let's give you a huge uh, shout out. Uptown Dre is another guy who is a, uh, who is a regular here in uh, Ref the District. And uh, again, make sure you check us out live every Wednesday night. And we'll be putting up, putting out stuff all the time. We appreciate y'all again. And for Nathan and Trev, I'm the Stoner. Trev, until next time, be a dish. <laughs> oh my God, be a fan. And I gotta go and get to the uh, video because I uh, we're 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 we're, we're, what happened? we're be a fan. What all right, be a fan. <laughs>